Good morning and welcome to this week's Weekend Weird Files. I'm your host, Andrea, and today I'm bringing you all the strange headlines from the past week. But before we get too into the thick of things, I want to give my grandson, Jackson, a big shout out. He turned seven on this past Thursday, so happy birthday, little man. Nana loves you so very much, and you're so funny and smart, and you keep me on my toes for sure. I never imagined that being a Nana would be awesome until you came along, little buddy. So, I hope the your birthday was like the best one yet. Triple M Studios the weekend, the weekend, the weekend. Here's your host, Here's your host Andrea, 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 Andrea. All right, well, let's get this week's episode started. And we're starting in West Virginia today. Where 45-year-old Johnny Carson York Jr. allegedly chased members of his family with an axe and with a bow and arrow. But why? (laughs) Well, because as he told deputies, he had to kill them to get the demons out. This took place at the family's home in Bramwell, which is a small town near the West Virginia and Virginia border. Now, according to the deputies, the incident started when a family member asked him to put some items in a shed before it started raining, and I guess it set him off because he responded by throwing a lighter at the family member, and then he began chasing them with a mall. Now, I had to Google mall because the only mall that I was familiar with was like when an animal attacks, but in this case, it's a tool with a long handle and a heavy head, kind of like a sledgehammer, I guess you could say. Now, his parents were able to call 911, and that's when he began trying to shoot them with the bow and arrow. Earlier in the day, York had broken the family's TV set, and they resorted to filing a domestic violence protection order against him, but it hadn't been served yet. So after he was arrested, He told deputies that he felt like he needed to kill everyone he sees. Now, he's been charged with malicious assault, brandishing, and destruction of property. At this time, he's still being held at the Southern Regional Jail. Well, a recent TikTok has went viral after it was posted saying that a Morgan County, Alabama Sheriff's Lieutenant looks like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It it all started after a Walmart employee told another officer that he wanted to meet the officer that looks like The Rock. Well, The Rock's lookalike's name is Lieutenant Eric Fields, and he was more than happy to meet the Walmart employee, and he even posed for a photo with him. Now, if you haven't seen the picture of him that's been floating around social media lately, I'll have it on our social media pages so you can check it out. And I have to say, he really does look like The Rock. Like, and Alex has argued with me this week that it's not actually a different person that is The Rock. But anyway, whatever, Alex. Um, Lieutenant Fields said that he's been told for a long time now that people say he looks like The Rock or Vin Diesel. And I don't really see the Vin Diesel, but I do see The Rock. And he said his wife gets a big kick out of it. Um... But here's the cool thing about Lieutenant Fields. He's not keeping that fame to himself, so he's using it to help raise awareness and money for Sergeant Chris Dillard, who is a 26-year-old law enforcement veteran at the same sheriff's office, and he was recently diagnosed with ALS. Well, so far, they've raised over $16,000 of the $35,000 goal on the GoFundMe that was set up for Dillard. Now, the next story is pretty upsetting, um, but it is a little bit strange, too. But, however, it involves a young person. Um, In Atlanta, an 18-year-old student athlete was killed when an elevator trapped and killed him as it fell and took him down with it. Jamarcus McFarland died on Tuesday at a student housing building in Atlanta. McFarland was a football player at Champion Prep Academy, and McFarland and two other 
players were taking the elevator downstairs to go to the practice when witnesses say that the elevator felt like it was falling. When the elevator um, reached the third floor, it came to a stop and the doors opened. And that's when the other two students exited the elevator. But when McFarland tried to exit, the elevator fell against, or it fell again, crushing and trapping him between the top of the elevator and the floor of the shaft. Um, and he was trapped there for almost an hour before he could be recovered. And then he passed away at an area hospital. Now, the building property manager released a statement saying that the elevator was not due for its five-year inspection until 2024 and that it had just been serviced the week before the incident. Now, although he couldn't say for sure until the state inspector releases their findings, um, he did say that the weight limit of 3,000 pounds had been exceeded because at the time of the accident he's saying that there was 16 athletes on the elevator now I'm not here to dispute what he or the students say I'm just telling y'all what I read but anyway champion prep academy is a program and I had never heard of anything like this and I think it's pretty cool but it's a program that bridges the gap between high school and college for athletes hoping for um, scholarships but it, that is just such a sad tragedy um his family is coming down from atlanta but i mean from missouri to atlanta i just can't even imagine something like that happening and it's terrible just terrible well y'all that's all i have for today and i hope y'all have a great weekend come back on monday for an all new episode of mystery murder and magic college football is getting started this weekend for some teams and all i got to say is roll tide baby roll tide y'all have a good weekend